There we go, swing away toolbox on the back now. I'm quite happy with that. I'll show you how I did it. G'day folks, how you doing? So I'm back here in the uh, outside undercover workshop and as you can see from the start of the video that I am needing some extra storage space on the van as I'm prepping towards uh, going towards uh, going to Tasmania for a couple of weeks at least and uh, I thought I need to do a swing away storage box compartment of some kind on the back where I do like to use found objects and repurpose them into something else I have a similar one part to that is the frame structure will be a reasonably heavy duty galvanized old style tent pole one where you uh, you know put another section on there and have a big old steel tent pole uh, I've got a few of those and you know I've got no use for uh, using them as tent poles so very lightweight barbells but hmm so I'm going to frame up with this stuff and then I'm going to attach a box. I've basically bought a metal box, metal toolbox, you'll see that. Uh, and I can fit that with D-bolts or some other method, I don't know yet, but probably the uh, D-bolts which I've already bought. So I have gone out and bought a lot of new stuff, obviously just the hardware and all that kind of thing, and a new box. I did have a box here, but I've determined it is too big. I don't want it to stick out much further past uh, the spare wheel that's already on there and that's a uh, swing away spare wheel and that job was quite obviously done by a professional I could get it done by a professional but it's a project uh, my only concern is that this steel may not be strong enough might wobble too much but I'm going to show you how it's going to be attached anyway so we'll have a quick look at that and then we'll get into constructing it so here's our swing away spare tire already on the vehicle when I bought it so as you can see I push in a little bit further and this uh, clip uh, goes vertical and down and I put a little nut on that thing there the dog would bark at birds while I'm doing this but it's a heavy duty system steel tubing with a pipe here and as you can see they've drilled a hole in the bumper and it goes down to I think a welded inner pipe and it's held in place by this nut so I'm going to do this a little bit different I'm going to fit a steel gate holder the one you put on the bottom of a post and pop the gate into to swing around on and I'm going to place that in here that's too far in but it will be closer to the end I have to allow my back door of the van to open so I'm going to bolt it to from the outside of the bumper to there and the pipe I'll be of course drilling a hole in the top above that and the pipe imagine this is going through the top will come down onto that and it'll be able to swivel on that thing there so that's the basic uh, setup it'll have stability by traveling through the top and onto there so the first thing I'm going to do is drill the hole. Now I'm using a 
a bimetal cobalt hole saw, 29 millimeters. I'm told that this will do the trick by someone in store, and I've got to go through about probably nine millimeters of uh, of steel, maybe a little bit less. In conjunction with that, I'm told I should use some endurance cutting fluid, obviously to keep the heat down. So that's the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to drill this hole. I've already marked my spot, I believe I'm reasonably accurate in line with uh, my little pole holder. So that's what I'm going to do first. I feel it's the most precarious uh, part of the project, so I want to get that done and dusted and out of the way. Let's go do it. I am of course using corded power for this. I don't think the uh, battery drill will last long enough going through this steel. It's quite a sunny day. I probably should get sun smart and get safety smart. Start with my goggles and I'll whack on my hat. Alright, here goes nothing. Put a bit of this liquid on, I'm not sure how much. I'll add a bit more as I go along. Should I go to two speed? Okay, there's the start of our hole. Put a bit more liquid on that. Looks like a constant supply of liquid to be uh, ideal. Getting there. Okay, my drill bit fell out. Well, that wasn't too bad. It was easy enough. Still got teeth on the uh, on the cutting drill bit. However, the shame of it was is that um, there is a little screw in there. Don't know if you're going to see that at all. That holds the drill bit in, and uh, halfway through the cut, I, the drill bit dropped out because the screw came loose, and the screw has completely disappeared. I sweep the ground with this uh, welding magnet. Couldn't find it. Must have just flown out somewhere. But my hole is drilled. Let's just see if our pipe fits it, shall we? Lovely. Now let's just see how we go sitting it on this thing. Oh, let's turn it around that way for a start. That works for me. Not bad at all.
now it's time to fit this against the back there so there we have our bracket fixed and our pole temporarily sitting in there as you can see it clearly turns it sits pretty solid time to move on to making up our frame so I'll just give you an example of our clearance when we open our door we have about a centimetre clearance that's actually a little bit more than the clearance the uh, swing out tyre spare tyre rack has so I'm happy with that hey there so here we have a basic mock-up of the frame I'm using fencing materials basically uh, fencing brackets so I've got these pipe brackets here for uh, fencing and you know that kind of business there's already two on here as you can see this piece will not be under these two it'll be in line with that with also obviously like so like so and that's going to make up the basis of my frame now I've got a couple of uh, protective rubber stops on the end there they were just came with this these poles anyway so they work well on top the length is yet to be determined this is just the basic mock-up and of course the part that goes into the bumper bar I need a specific distance from the bottom bar to the bumper bar because I need to clear the tail lights of the vehicle so if you can imagine bumper bar down here tail lights first bar of the rack second bar of the rack depending on the size of my box of how I attach these these may come in closer to each other and now over this one obviously it won't be as long uh, because I'm going through the bumper with this one this one I want to bring back in onto the top of the bumper and quite possibly another rubber foot that would sit on the bumper once I've turned it back in and at the moment I'm toying with the idea of when I swing this back to the bumper <coughs> gate fitting spring latch on the outside of that with a couple of uh, D-bolts or U-bolts holding that on so I bring it back in got my little rubber foot on there place that there I bring it back in lift up the thing and drill another hole into the bumper bar and drop that in and then of course it can't go anywhere can it? it can't swing back out so that's the basic mock-up for now I'll get back to you when I've got it all together again.
So we're getting there folks. <clears throat> As you can see, that is the part that goes through the bumper and down to the little holding pin. So this is the outside of the vehicle. Got these brackets lined up just with the edge of the box. I did need to keep it as short as possible in length. So all I gotta do is cut off uh, a little bit off here and put one of those rubber stoppers on there. The rubber stopper on the inside one as well. And then I've got to determine the length of this yet because that's going to sit on top of the bumper bar with another rubber stopper on the bottom and of course my spring-loaded gate latch. Here's the basic frame with a couple more cuts to do. I'm now going to get all of that done <coughs> and be showing you the near end product. And so that I don't uh, catch whatever I put in that box could be some fabric materials, it could be my um, life jacket, that kind of thing, and I don't want to catch anything on the sharp end of the U-bolts. Um, so I'm going to put these dome nuts, nice smooth dome on the end of it, so nothing will catch on it. And there we have the back of the U-bolts on. Probably done that one a little bit tight, it's almost wrapping around the bar. And they've got their the little dome nuts on. Oh, that's basically it. I've still got to put my latch on here that'll drop into a hole. Still got to drill a hole in there. There's a little bit of wobble in it. Thinking I might need something to uh, just secure it on that angle from here to here. I was looking for a um, toolbox that was more shallow in depth and therefore deeper and I could swing this around and have it flat with the lid coming down but I want a top loading, I want to be able to drop stuff in the box so at the moment I don't mind it. In the future I think I will still look for a, a shallower box just couldn't find anything but I'm done for the day now so I think I'll um, tomorrow I'll work on putting my latch on and I think maybe I need some kind of grommet where it goes where the pole goes through the top of the bull bar because that's where the wobble is so some kind of rubber grommet to then slide the pole into but definitely some kind of uh, support piece there to there. If I had used, I could use a wider hole. That's only about a 30 millimeter diameter pole. The whole thing's incredibly light. And of course I'd have to build, uh, drill a bigger hole. Uh, have some other thing down the bottom to catch that again. And it would be more along the lines of the thickness and sturdiness of this frame. However, I think if I can just uh, sturdy that up with a centre support, I'll work something out. Get back to it tomorrow. So 
So who can spot the glaring mistake? I'll give you a moment. Can you read my number plate? Now my brother just pointed out to me that the coppers out on the road, they're going to pull me up for that. And they're going to say, oh, that number plate is obscured, buddy. Here's a $500 fine. And so, I've got to rejig it all. Basically, I'm going to take that right leg that rests on top of the bumper bar and I'm going to move it in around about probably in the middle between the tail light and the start of the number plate, which will actually match the spare wheel support as well. Uh, it's a very light box, so the frame is really solid. And I'll move the box over to be flush with the outside of the outside pole. And so I'll be resting it on the brackets themselves, which will create a gap between the back poles. Uh, so I'm going to go to the old Clark rubber and I'm going to get myself uh, some rubber sleeve to put on the poles to do a bit of cushioning against the back of the, of the box. The U-bolts have plenty of thread on the inside to still reach, even though the poles will be held off of the box. So that's the screw up. Now it's time for the fix up. And so fixeth that problem. So as you can see, I've uh, shortened the frame so that my resting pole on top of the bumper bar didn't quite work out halfway between the light and the number plate, but it's in between in that space. And so standing back from pretty much all angles, you can see the tail light nice and clearly. Um, as you can see, I've got the rubber sleeves as well on the back. That's just giving a, a cushioning effect between the poles and the box. I've put some grease down below on the holding pin and also inside the pole so it's nice and quiet when it swivels around on there. The spring latch uh, I couldn't think of any other way to fix that other than drilling holes right through the pipe in two spots through the back plate of the latch itself and a couple of bolts and nuts on there and that holds that super tight so that's good. Uh, what else? The support mechanism that you see on the 45 degree angle there, uh, I found an adjustable tent pole, steel tent pole, smaller one, smaller diameter, with the uh, flat end on, uh, with the hole in it. I cut that down to length and bent the flat part just a little bit. I hammered flat the other end and bent that to suit the angle and uh, basically secured from the inside of the box, another nut and bolt underneath, and nut and bolt, uh, a nut and bolt drilled into the bumper, and obviously you can see that I've just secured that with a wing nut. So I can just undo that wing nut, lift up the latch, and pull her out. Um, now, whilst I have a padlock on the box, there's really nothing to stop anyone from coming along and taking this away. They just have to undo the wing nut, lift up the latch, lift the pole out. I had thought about just underneath uh, the bumper where the pole travels through of putting something there but again it would be a mechanical thing that could just be undone and taken away. I have secured two of the bolts on the fence brackets that hold the pipe I've secured two of those from inside the box uh, so that would be if you're going to take it away you would have to take the whole lot away um, yeah but you know these will be these if they want to get into something they will I'll get into a car won't they but in saying that this whole time I've had the van the spare wheel carrier can be 
taken away. It's only being held by a nut, which you could undo the nut, pull out a pin that's at the bottom of its uh, swivel part, lift that up and go. But, uh, you know, I'll take my chances. So I'm quite happy with the way that's all turned out. Got myself a storage box, swing away, I can still open the tailgate. Cost me a little bit of money in hardware, not a lot. I think one more thing I'll do is the flappy handles on the box, they do bang against the metal. I might, uh, I don't know, just wrap a bit of foam around that with some insulation tape just to quieten that down a bit. Where the pole runs through the bumper, there is still just a little bit of movement there. And I could not for the life of me find any kind of grommet or open plastic grommet or even a rubber grommet to sit in there and then travel the pole through that. It's really only about a millimeter or less clearance around but it's enough to cause a wobble. So I've taken a plumbing, small plumbing pipe holder, bracket, little bracket thing and just shoved it in the gap. It's pretty firm and tight. It may work its way out in transit, but uh, I'll just keep shoving things in there. Otherwise, I don't think it's going to be a bother at all. So there we go. Another little job done and dusted. I can get a few things out of the van now and into this lockable box. Now I'm less than one week away from jumping on the boat and heading to Tasmania. For my well-earned, a minimum, two-week road trip. Waiting for a tractor. Take care of yourselves, folks. I'll see you next time.